All right, welcome everybody. This is Charlie Stern, and you're watching 914 Wired, which is a, uh, I guess, what do we call it these days, Peter and Ardina? We call it a public affairs podcast, video we call podcast? It a, we call it a talk show. With, it's a talk show. We interview people where we talk about uh, politics, perks. education, and culture, and things that are going on uh, primarily in Westchester and, and elsewhere. And uh, first show of 2024, Peter and Ardina, my partners in crime here, welcome back and Happy New Year. Thank you. Same to you. And uh, our guest is Bobby Ann Cox. Welcome, Bobby Ann. Yes, thank you for having me on. So, so you are an attorney, and you have a, uh, I guess, an organization that you're working with called StopNYCorruption.com, where you are raising awareness uh, of what's going on in Albany right now. And I'm, I can't tell you how delighted I am that you are coming on the show today, because I think if more people were aware of this topic that you're about to talk about, they wouldn't believe it. If people were as familiar with what's going on with the Court of Appeals and the lawsuit to allow the redistricting of congressional lines in New York State, if people knew as much about this as they do about some other public affairs right now, they wouldn't believe it. So one thing I must say, the website, stopnycorruption.com, um, I realize you're advocating a particular position, but you do have some information on there that is fantastic, where you break down all, there's like a timeline that explains what has happened since 2014 that brings us to the doorstep of where we are today. I'm going to take a breath for air. Why don't you, Bobby Ann, give us that, a little bit of that background on why this is such a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you mentioned, I'm an attorney here in New York. I've been practicing for 25 years. And this topic of redistricting uh, our congressional maps is, is really very serious. Um, most New Yorkers don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but this actually has national implications because we're talking about um, the districts in New York State by which we vote for our congressional representatives. So, you know, Congress is right now the the, the United States Senate is controlled by the Repu uh, by the Democrats and the uh, House of Representatives is controlled by the Republicans. Um, and of course, the White House is controlled by the Democrats. So, you know, there there's somewhat of a balance of power, we might say, um, you know, there's not one party ruling the entire government right now at the federal level, um, which is good for the people. Um, but what's happening right now in New York State is, you know, we had our congressional district maps redrawn already. That happened in 2022. As a and result that, of the census, which happens, we should say a little like a little civics lesson here. Every 10 <laughs> years, there's a census. And as a result of the census, the district lines have an opportunity to be redrawn to adjust for the changes in the population that have occurred in the prior 10 years. So that's that's what's normally supposed to happen. Yeah, there is no political consensus after the census. <laughs> True. Um, so here in New York State, we actually we meaning the voters of New York in 2014, we changed our New York State Constitution and we said that we wanted every 10 years when there's a census, which the last one was 2020, um, our district maps are supposed to be redrawn in, in accordance with the census to see, you know, how many how many people are living here now. Right. And, and what districts are they living in? Where are they living in New York State? Um, so. In accordance with that, uh, we then draw our congressional map so that you can vote for who you want to represent you in Congress. And um, the issue is that in 2014, we the people amended our constitution to say that we didn't want the New York State Legislature to draw those maps anymore. Time out, time out. And the 2024 constitutional change in New York State was what, a referendum? The 2014 change was uh, an actual, yes, it was an actual change to our constitution, which happens by first the legislature has to pass the, what, what they propose to be the changes to the constitution. Two different sessions of our legislature have to pass that, two consecutive sessions. And then if it is passed, 
by two consecutive sessions of our New York State Legislature, then it goes on the ballot for the people of New York to vote on. And we either vote yes or we vote no. And, and we voted yes. And we voted yes back and in that, that all happened. And that all happened 10 years ago. Correct. Correct. So what that amendment to our Constitution says from 10 years ago is that starting with the 2020 census, from now on, at that point forward, the New York State Legislature is no longer going to draw the maps because we didn't want gerrymandering, right? We which had been happening historically. Yes. Which not, just the New York, not just the New York State. This is an issue across the country in many, 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 many states. But now right. it's got an interesting twist in New York because okay. in the places, a lot of places in the country where it's happening have Republican-led legislatures. New York right. has a supermajority Democratic legislature yes. playing the same game. Go ahead. Right. So then what happens is we hit 2020. We have the census. Okay. Now, according to our change in our Constitution, the legislature is not going to draw the maps. It's going to be an independent redistricting commission. Uh -huh. The IRC. IRC right? right. It's made up of five Democrats and five Republicans. Um, they are appointed, you know, uh, each leader in both the houses. So the, the minority leader in the Senate, the majority leader in the Senate, the minority leader in the Assembly, the majority leader in the Senate. You know, everybody gets to appoint two people. We have five total for the Republicans, five total for the Democrats, and they're supposed to jointly come up with new maps. So uh, that didn't happen. Uh, they did try. Uh, and in 2022, the beginning of 2022, they couldn't come to a consensus on a map. So what happened was the legislature stepped in and the legislature drew the map, the congressional map, which is completely unconstitutional. Our constitution now in New York state says they can't do that anymore, um, but they did. So of course they were sued. Um, and the Court of Appeals, it went up to the Court of Appeals, which is our highest court back in 2022, and the court struck that map down and said, no, you can't do this. This is unconstitutional uh, for a couple different reasons, but certainly it was gerrymandered. So they said, nope, we're going to have an independent redistricting person, a special master is going to come in, not even from New York, the man was from Pennsylvania, is going to come in and draw these maps and that way we can get some fair maps. Um, and that's what happened in 2022. And we had our congressional elections in November of 2022. And uh, what we saw was very competitive races here in New York State for the first time in a, in a very long time. Um, and you actually saw five seats go from Democrat to Republican here in New York State. And so that caused the House of Representatives in our federal government to flip from Democrat controlled to Republican controlled, um, which apparently was a problem for the Democrats because they then sued in 2023. And um, what is the and what is the, what are they suing to accomplish? I think I know the answer, but you're the constitutional law expert. Why don't you yeah. explain what their lawsuit is attempting to achieve? Yes, so their lawsuit was brought in 2023, not because they were arguing that the maps <coughs> were unconstitutional. That's not what they said. They didn't think they were unfair. They didn't think they were gerrymandered. They simply wanted another bite at the apple. They just wanted to draw the maps again. So they came up with uh, an argument that said that the, um, the process that was laid out in the Constitution wasn't followed properly um, and that they needed to have the independent redistricting commission, the IRC needed to have a second shot. Um, and without getting too much in the weeds, um, I'll just say their argument was, uh, in my opinion, flawed legally. Uh, and they also missed their, their time frame. They waited too long to bring the case. They missed the statute of limitations. Uh, but nonetheless, the New York State Court of Appeals ruled in their favor just just a few weeks ago in December. Right. So December 12th, the court came out with an opinion, the Court of Appeals of mm -hmm. New York State, and agreed with the, the I guess with, I'm going to say generally, they agreed with the Democrats who brought this lawsuit. Can you be more specific about who's bringing that lawsuit? Is it the DCCC? Is it national politicians? Is it state legislators? Is it, who is it? 
Yeah, it was um, definitely, it was, you know, the DCCC was involved there and uh, in conjunction with, uh, you know, local state politicians. This is all politicians, you know, uh, working the system here. And um, it's really a shame because what happened now is that that the maps, the court did order that the maps now have to be redrawn again by the IRC, which our constitution in New York State prohibits that. It doesn't allow for mid-decade redistricting. It specifically says you draw the maps once and those maps stay for the 10 years until your next census. So the maps from 2022, as per our New York State constitution, were supposed to stay in place until 2030 census. So now here we have the IRC. But Bobby Ann, but Bobby Ann that's, not, that's not my understanding of what the court's decision said. I thought the court's decision said that the, the district maps that were drawn by the special master were intended only for use in the 2022 um, election. And that's mm -hmm. the reason why the court is handing it back to the uh, IRC for, as you say, another chance, another bite at the apple or whatever term you used. Is that not correct? Uh, that's what the Court of Appeals said in this decision. But when you look at the Court of Appeals decision from 2022, which was the first lawsuit over the gerrymandering, gerrymandering of the maps, uh, the Court of Appeals in 2022 uh, was pretty clear that those maps were the maps that were going to stay. Um, until the 2030 census. So you have to look at both court decisions, um, not just the decision that was rendered three weeks ago. Right, but but um, here we are, and it, that decision was rendered, and it, December 12th, 2023, the court said, IRC, come up with new maps. That's where we are, and that's what's going okay, to Now, that, when that happens, is there oversight with that, or that's the final determinant? When, when you say... When that, the IRC redraws the maps... Are they the final word? No. So the process is that the IRC is supposed to come up with a map. They're supposed to send it to the legislature. The legislature is supposed to approve or disapprove the map. Um, if they now that we're in, in this supposed second round, as per the Court of Appeals decision in December, um, the legislature would be able to change the maps a certain percentage, a small percentage, 2% per district is what the statute says. Um, and, and so technically the legislature does have the final say, uh, which, you know, works okay if you have two, the two houses of our legislature being led by two different political parties. Um, the problem we're running into is that the, as you said earlier, the both houses in the New York State Legislature, the Senate and the Assembly, are supermajority run by the Democrats. So we're seeing um, a, an unusual tension and fighting between the two parties because the Democrats are not, um, in essence, considering uh, the other side of the equation. And that's how we got those drastically gerrymandered maps back in 2022, because um, it was a one party designation, really. Are, are, you, are you affiliated with one of the two parties? Uh, I'm actually a Democrat. So um, what I am is a constitutionalist and I follow the Constitution and I promote the Constitution and I bring lawsuits over the Constitution to make sure the government follows the Constitution. Um, and I'm not the attorney on this case. It's not my redistricting case. I have other cases I have going against the government for um, breaches of the Constitution. But the point is that it doesn't matter what your political party is. You should want the Constitution to be followed. You should want the Constitution to be upheld. And I don't like it when uh, the Constitution is not followed because the Constitution is the voice of the people, right? right. We we speak through our constitution and we are supposed to speak through our elected officials. Um, but when there's not a balance, we, we run into problems. And that's why, you know, we've had litigation on redistricting. We had it in 2022, we had it in 2023, and now we might have it in 2024 if the maps again get gerrymandered.
And, 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 and speak, I, oh, so speaking sorry. of that, now, what, what's going to happen? Th th this seems to be very unfair to the whole electoral process, because right now you have two candidates that are, that are, are going to vie for District 16. Uh, this is going to shorten their, their cycle. This is going to shorten their campaign cycle. Not only will it shorten their campaign cycle, but it's also, it could alter their districts. I mean, that, this has the potential of shifting the entirety of the 16th congressional district, depending on where the gerrymander lines, gerrymandering lines are, are, are drawn. So how, do, how, do, how, how, how does a candidate, for lack of a better argument, how does a candidate get justice or uh, get a, be able to, to mount a fair campaign if he doesn't know who or her district is going to be? That's right. You, that's an excellent point, Ardina. That's what. That's one of the problems is that when you keep redrawing the congressional map, you keep changing things. People don't know who their elected representatives, who 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 their choice is going to be. The the politicians themselves don't know their district is going to change. Are is their just district going to change so much that now they don't even live in their district anymore. I mean, it's very disturbing to the course of things, which is why our constitution says, once you draw the maps, they're supposed to stay for 10 years until we have another census. Um, so it, you're right. isn't, isn't Ken Jenkins like, the, is he the head of the IRC? Yes, yes, Ken Jenkins is, yes. The head of the IRC, he's the number two Westchester County for Democrat. De for the Democrats. And, for the Democrats. And he, um, if George Latimer, uh, uh, and, and he is the odds on favorite to become the next Westchester County executive. And he's tr I, it's from what I'm reading and from what we've discussed on the show before, um, his goal is to help George Latimer uh, displace Jamal Bowman as the Congress member for, for District 16. Well, right? it's a house of cards. I mean, if there, there are yeah. a lot of ifs, it, it depends on if the district. Uh, 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 if, if redistricting is favorable to Latimer, if it's favorable to, to Bowman, then, you know, Ken's going to be in the unemployment line. So uh, 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 this is the, this is the problem. I want to ask um, Bobby Ann, does this, is there a possibility then that this election cycle could be extended? Well, there's definitely going to be an issue I'm projecting um, with the primaries. Uh, because, you know, the what the Court of Appeals just now in December said was that this new map that the IRC is supposed to draw is supposed to be done by February 28th, but right, which petitions is, start February 27th. But <laughs> so, also, you know, keep in mind, too, that, that uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I don't want to lose, lose, lose the point. You I have two members going. of the yeah. IRC, uh, 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 IRC committee that just one passed away last week and the other one quit. So, you know, I'll let you answer that. How does that get mended? Right. So this is this is another problem. You're you're bringing up ex excellent points here, Ardina, because this is another problem. We don't have time to play these games, right? We we have an election in November, which sometimes people think, oh, that's so far away. But no, you have to have primaries before that. And before you get to the primaries, you have to walk petitions. You know, I mean, it's very complicated and it's very time consuming. And if the map that the IRC does come up with is, is either gerrymandered or in some way unconstitutional, I'm sure there's going to be another lawsuit. And another then lawsuits, lawsuits take time. Right. And then, yeah, so this is really a big problem. Um, as you might recall, the, the, the primary in uh, 2022 wasn't until August. I mean, it's very disruptive to right. the people, we the people, and it's very disruptive to the politicians and the candidates. Um, it's also very costly. Yeah. Right. I mean, to do or to have two different primaries, that so, adds an additional cost. So let me let me make a counter argument to that, because all, everything I agree with everything you're saying, Bobby Ann, but we're here. This is what's going to happen. This is the decision that the Court of Appeals has made. This uh, independent redistricting committee is going to have to have two new appointments and then they're going to have to sit down and come up with district lines. I don't know how difficult that is. Maybe they're going to reach into the drawer and pull out an old map and, and submit that to the state legislature and another round of luck. All those things are going to happen. And we have a system in our, our court system is set up to deal with election matters very, very rapidly. But nevertheless, 
the regularly scheduled primary date may, probably, will be pushed back. People will have to deal with it. People will have to figure out what district they're in, because some will change. Uh, I, I guess my question is, what's the alternative to this? Because it's extremely confusing to people. Uh, I can barely follow it, and I'm trying and right. and right. I, I don't think most people even know that it's going on or understand the political implications. But they're pretty. Um, uh, the the implications of this are kind of dark. They're kind of sinister because it, on a certain level, it it looks a lot like the politicians are arguing because they want to be able to pick their voters. And, yes. and, and this is the process. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking you now, as a constitutional law person, somebody's got to draw district lines, right? They're, they're not going to land here, you know, in a, in, a, in a Martian vehicle. So who's going to fairly draw district lines in New York? Is it going to be the courts? Is it going to be this mysterious IRC with appointees from a bunch of political people? Is it going to be the state legislatures? How is this? It's a problem all over the country. What, what seems to work? So, uh, Charles, to that question, uh, I have an excellent, uh, answer, uh, which if, if people go to our website, which you had mentioned earlier, stop nycorruption.com, there's all this information on there. Cause I know it's a lot to take in, in a conversation. Um, but the, the easiest, and best answer is the IRC should just readopt the map that was drawn in 2022 by the special master because that map was not challenged for being unfair. The map was not challenged for being unconstitutional. The map was not challenged for being gerrymandered. They only challenged the map last year, the Democrats, because they said that the process wasn't followed because an independent master, a special master, drew the map instead of the IRC. Or, so, or is all of that a big smoke screen for they're challenging it because they don't like the lines and they want to draw lines that are more favorable to electing right. Democrats? Well, Which that's, is it? Yeah, well, that's a great question, Charles. <laughs> um, you know, is <laughs> Is, is, it the, is it that the politicians are corrupt and they're pulling the strings? Yeah. Or is it that they really do want the Constitution to be followed mm -hmm. and they want the IRC to draw the map instead of the special master? But here's my answer. It doesn't really matter what the, uh, the I guess, impetus for their lawsuit last year was because now, like you said, the lawsuit's done, the Court of Appeals issued their decision, now we're moving forward, we can't go backwards. Um, but if they just re if the IRC just readopts the maps that were drawn by that special master, again, an independent special master from Pennsylvania has nothing to do with New York politics, drew the maps and they were not challenged for being unfair. They were not challenged for being unconstitutional. So why not just readopt, readopt that map? Because the Democrats <laughs> lost, because the Democrats lost five seats. That's why. But, but right. That, that, yes, I, I, I see what you're saying and I, I understand and I agree. However, if you look at the numbers, even though the Republicans took those five seats and won those districts that were, you know, had been Democrat held. If you look at the numbers, the Democrats still have quite a lead as far as the number of voters in those districts. Um, you know, I, I will give you an example. Um, Mike Lawler is a congressman. He's he's right next to Jamal Bowman's district um, where where I know that you sit. Um, and so he, and he's a plaintiff actually on one of my um, lawsuits against the governor on, on a different constitutional matter. Uh, but Mike Lawler's district is I, I believe it's plus something like plus 70,000 Democrats. So there are like 70,000 more Democrats in his district than Republicans. Yet he's a Republican. He still won. And he, and he won the district. So, you know, you see that throughout, um, you know, those five seats that flipped. Um, if we look at the numbers, which we're going to be putting that information up on our website uh, soon, stopnycorruption.com. If you look at the numbers, they're still heavily Democrat voter led. So that's why I'm saying that the map that was drawn in 2022 by that independent special master from Pennsylvania 
was a great map. It was very fair. It, it still gave the Democrats the, the numbers, um, but the Republicans were able to compete. And, and that's what you want, because, again, this uh, is by the way, I think Mondaire Jones would argue with you about the 2022 map. It, it got he lost his he, he lost his ability to to win office because he had his constituency was taken from him. So I, I don't know that that's entirely accurate what you just said. Well, there's well, always going to be argument, but 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 the thing is, yeah. in the worst case scenario, Bobby Ann, would you the, the, the in the worst case scenario, would you anticipate just a series of challenges? Because there seems to be no no uh, limit on how many times these these redistricting uh, issues can be appealed, and if there's no breaks on the appeals, then we could be we could be having the same discussion, the same show. Six months from now. Well, this is right, and this is the problem, right? So and we'll bring you back in six months when Mardina yeah, turns Bobby, out to yeah, be right. We need, we need you to come on here. You're the only person in captivity that understands this whole thing from end to end because it's so complicated. Yes. When I sat down to research this thing, I could barely put the thing. To, I had to, I had to take the court decision and shove it into ChatGPT to get a summary and understand how it works. It's like which, unbelievable. Which, which, which he sent to us. And so Ardina and I, I can't speak for Ardina. Ardina probably has a better depth of understanding of complex issues. But for me, the, G, the chat GPT laid it out for me. It really oh, helped. No, no, no. Go to my website. <laughs> yes, my that website. website. I'm going to repeat it again. StopNYCorruption.com. Uh, Bobby Ann Cox, you've done a great job and you have a very Indeed. good. Indeed. There's a timeline on there that explains, even if you, you agree or you don't disagree, you like the lines or you don't like the lines, look at that website because uh, it spells out what has happened since 2014 so people can get a better uh, a sense of what's actually involved. And Ardina, I watched on that website, there's a uh, press conference that Bobby Ann had with a bunch of New York City um, uh, council members and other politicians and I heard Lee Zeldin say, and I quote, there is zero per zero percent chance of no chaos as a result of what's going on. With he was right. Lines. He was right. He was absolutely right. And, uh, I, and I, I would like Bobby Ann to commit. I'm going to put her on the spot because she's such a good, informed attorney guest that she's going to be back on the show. Yes, no, I'm happy to come back on. I, I appreciate uh, you having me. It's really important that people know what's going on. Uh, most New Yorkers don't understand it. And if they do hear something about, you know, redistricting what's going on, like you said, it's a complicated topic. So it takes some explaining to understand. Um, and, you know, we have a petition on our website, um, Stop NY Corruption. And if people want to um, sign the petition or come, you know, join our email list, We'll send out emails, um, not not too often. We don't bombard your inbox. Um, it's once every couple of weeks. We'll send an email just to give an update to people of what's going on, um, suggested action items that people can do. Uh, but the website really is key. We're going to be um, putting a, uh, a new video commercial up on the website. Um, we had one before. Now that the um, IRC is going to be redrawing the maps, we're going to update that video and, again, try and help people understand what's going on um, and what they can do. I mean, the biggest thing that people can do is reach out to their state legislators you know, their state senator, their state assembly member, and tell them, look, this is crazy. What, what are we doing? Have the IRC just readopt the current map. It was drawn by the special master. Nobody challenged that map as yeah. being unfair. Yeah. You know, it was only after the 2022 elections that the Democrats said, oh, oh, dear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need Public to do pressure. this again. <laughs> you know, so, Charles, Charles, you know something? We need Bobby in. And Ardina, I think we need Bobby in to be with us on any election night we have. Absolutely, absolutely, yep. absolutely. Whenever She's... that happens to be, it could be in uh, it could be in March, it could be in uh, June, it could be in August. We don't know when the primary is going to be. Well, but she, whenever yeah. it is, she may be yeah. back sooner than later because if the IRC doesn't get their act together, I think the what's the the deadline is uh, the end of February. Yeah, if they don't have their uh, blank in a row, then then we're going to have more problems. Oh, we're going to, you know, Lee Zeldin, um, we, he, we actually did many press conferences. The one that you saw on our website that was uh, in New York City 
was just the most recent one. We, Lee and I were up in you know, Buffalo, we were in Rochester, we were in Syracuse, you know, doing press conferences to try and help raise awareness about this issue. And, um, you know, it's so important because he's right. There is yeah. going to be chaos, you yeah. know, redrawing the maps. It's not a simple thing to do. It yeah. takes time. It takes expertise. It takes money, a lot of money, but it's a waste of our tax dollars. If they yeah. just simply adopt the map that was drawn by the special master from Pennsylvania, you're going to save a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money. You'll have fair maps that are constitutional that nobody's bickering or fighting over because now they're being issued by the IRC. It would be a very simple, easy process and it would avoid that chaos. So, but I, I don't know. I mean, you know, what's going to happen here? It's, it's a none of us do. Yeah, none of us do. Bobby Ann Cox, a constitutional attorney, uh, thank you for spending a few minutes to explain this extremely complicated issue. Uh, we look forward to talking with you again. On behalf of my co-hosts, Ardina Seward and Peter Moses, thank you for coming on the program. Um, if you're listening uh, on YouTube, make sure you click uh, like. And if you're on one of the podcast platforms, click subscribe. Thank you very much, Bobby and Cox. And uh, we'll see everybody on the next 914 Wired. Thank you. Okay.